Uh, my name is Emily Peters, and I'm a mathematician at MIT. And today, I'm going to be telling you about the platonic solids. Um, specifically, uh, that there are only five of them, and why there are only five of them. And for me, this was like the favorite thing I learned in high school math, in high school geometry, from my wonderful teacher, uh, John Benson. So this was, for me, the high point of, of kind of math before college, and so I really wanted to share this with you today. So uh, what are the platonic solids? So there are some familiar ones in here, like the cube, and probably you've also heard of the tetrahedron, which is like a pyramid, but it has a triangular face, and its friend, the octahedron, which is built out of Platonic solids. There's the dodecahedron, which has faces which are pentagons, and there are 12 of these. So there's two of them, the front and the back, and then we're going to add 10 more side pieces, and when I finish drawing these lines in, hopefully this will start to look a solid object. There we go. And the remaining one is the icosahedron. So again, the icosahedron has triangular faces. Um, it has 20 of these. And this is another one that will look implausible while I'm drawing it, but hopefully it should come together. Let's see, can we double check that this has, like I claimed, 20 faces? So let's, let's maybe start from the bottom, right? You can see this kind of diamond-shaped thing down here. It's a, a triangular, five triangles. And then at the top, there's another diamond cap like that that has another five triangles in it. And then there's this belt around the middle that, if you count, will in fact have 10 more triangles. So this is in fact an icosahedron. Okay, um, what do all of these shapes have in common? Why do we have a name for this collection of five shapes and no others? So, and also, why are they called the platonic solids? So a little bit of, of history here. Um, Plato does talk about these in one of his, uh, his works, but he wasn't the first person to notice that these had something in common that other things didn't. Um, that credit probably goes to Theaetetus, whose work hasn't survived, but uh, who other people mention having known these things. And what does it mean to invent the platonic solids? You know, certainly the cube, the tetrahedron, the octahedron were known uh, before this. But the sort of the reason that you might put these in a group together is by noticing the features they have in common. So for one thing, um, each of these has regular faces and identical faces. So the faces of the cube are squares, and there are Every single face of the cube is a square. We have three things whose faces are regular triangles, and one thing, the dodecahedron, whose faces are regular pentagons. And is this enough to make something a platonic solid? Well, it's not. It turns out that if all you want is things with regular identical faces, you could imagine taking two tetrahedra and sticking them together along one face. The result would look sort of like this, solid, and the reason is that it's sort of, it's less symmetric, it's less regular than these things, but how do we quantify that? Well, the property that all these platonic solids have that this thing doesn't is that 
each of these has regularity not just of a face, but of every vertex. So every vertex in the cube has three faces coming together, three edges coming out of it. Every vertex of the tetrahedron has three triangles, three edges. For the octahedron, you can check that every vertex has four edges coming out of it and four faces. For the icosahedron, it's five. And for the dodecahedron, it's three again. Now, if we go over here, we notice that here's one vertex that has three edges coming out of it, but here's a different vertex that has four edges coming out of it. And so that's why we don't consider this to be a platonic solid. Okay, but how do you know that I've got them all, right? That's the question. How do you know that there's not something that I just didn't think of that has both of these properties? And this is actually not such a hard question to answer. We just have to be a little bit systematic in how we think about our construction of the photonic solids. So let's start by thinking about triangles. What platonic solids can you build out of a triangle? Is there anything other than the tetrahedron, the octahedron, or the icosahedron? Well, the tetrahedron has three triangles at every vertex. The octahedron has four and the icosahedron has five. So what are the other possibilities? Well, let's see. If you tried to go less than that, you'd only have two triangles coming together at a vertex. And this, when you try to imagine what would happen if you glued these two triangles together, you would just get something flat. It wouldn't be a solid. Okay, so two is out. Three, four, and five all have the examples that exist. What about six? What happened if we had six regular triangles and we tried to glue them all together around a point? So, in this case, when we do this, we get something that lies flat in the blackboard. By which I mean, the sum of the angles around this central vertex that we stuck six triangles at is 360 degrees because every vertex in a regular triangle is 60 degrees. Okay, so if we did this, again, we see something that's not going to be a solid because there's no way for it to curl up out of the chalkboard. Okay, now, admittedly, these are all pictures in the chalkboard, but when I draw them, you can kind of see that when you put just five triangles together, you have this extra gap, this wedge in here, and when you try to glue this edge here to this edge here, you end up kind of having, if these were actual pieces of paper, they would kind of pull out of the chalkboard. You would get some, some curvature. Okay, and so you need to have that in order to get something to curl up on itself to become a solid. And we don't see that when we put six of these together. Okay, so two is out. Three, four, five are okay. Six is too big. What if we tried to add a seventh thing in there? Well, if we come in here and we cut two of these apart and we try to glue a seventh one in there, we get this sort of extra wobbliness. And again, it doesn't lie flat in the board, but there's too much angle. Sort of, some of it will curl forwards to you and some of it will curl back. And if you had just a bunch of pieces of paper that were triangles and you started trying to take them together, and at every vertex you tried to take seven of them, you quickly get something which is a representation of hyperbolic space, which is a kind of space that actually has negative curvature, where things curve away from each other. And again, it's not going to fold up. It's not going to be positively curved like these platonic solids are. Okay, so seven or more triangles than that, eight or nine or ten or whatever, is going to give you hyperbolic space. Um, six of them is going to give you something flat that lives in the plane. Five, four, and three are going to give you platonic solids. So that's showed that the only platonic solids with triangular faces are the three we have here. And so we're just going to be systematic about this. We're now going to make the same argument for things that have faces that are squares or things that have faces that are pentagons. So for squares, if we try to put three squares together and fold this up into the corner of some sort of object, we get a cube. 
if we keep repeating this at every corner. If we try to put four together, we get what's called a tiling, something that we can just keep doing it in the blackboard without ever coming out of the blackboard. And so again, not a platonic solid. And if we tried to put five or more, we would get this hyperbolic space again. Okay, so the only thing with square faces is the cube. Pentagons, same thing. So pentagons have an interior angle of 108 degrees, and 3 times 108 is 324. So since this is less than 360 degrees, it does curl up, and we can keep doing this process until we get something closed, the dodecahedron. But if we had four or more faces, we'd get more than 360 degrees. And so we get hyperbolic space again. So in fact, just by thinking systematically about what we can build out of the different you know, pieces of our construction kit, we can see that these five platonic solids are the only possible platonic solids. OK. And now, something else I'd like to tell you about is a lead-in to a different way to prove that there are only five platonic solids. So I want to collect some data about these things. So the data is going to be the number of vertices, the number of edges, and the number of faces. So for the tetrahedron, um, this is a simple counting problem. Well, it's a, it's a counting problem for all of these. For some of these, it's easier not to make a mistake when you're doing it than with others. So, okay. The tetrahedron has four vertices and four faces and one, two, three, four, five, six edges. Okay, how about the cube? Cube has eight vertices and it has six faces, and for edges, we have four on the bottom, and four on the sides, and four on the top, so a total of 12. All right, how about the octahedron? Here we get, let's see, vertices one, two, three, four, five, six. Faces, there are gonna be Eight of these, you can see that there's the sort of one triangle on the top and the one on the bottom, and then this belt around the outside that has six in it. And for edges, let's see, I count 12 of these again. Okay. Uh, and so the problem now gets a little harder. So, how about the dodecahedron? Um, for vertices, we have five, ten on those middle pentagons, and then around the outside, we have ten more, so twenty. As mentioned before, we have twelve pentagon faces. How about the edges? So, these middle pentagons give us five and five, that's ten, and then each of these has an edge coming out of it, so that's another ten in this belt here, so that's twenty. And then finally, the ones on the outside, you can check there are 10 more of those, and we get 30. Okay, and how about finally the icosahedron? So here, we see how many vertices. So we could go just top down. Here's one, this plane has five, this plane has five, and then there's another one on the bottom. And we mentioned earlier that there were 20 faces. And so edges, ooh, all right. So let's just go down. So first we have five, and then we hit five more, that's 10. And then going down from here, there are 10 more edges, so that's 20. Pick up another five in this plane is 25, and these final ones give us 30. Okay, what's the point of my having done this basic counting exercise? So the point is the observation that there seems to be a property in common here, okay? So look at the count of vertices plus edges. We get eight, here we get 14, 14, 30 
32, and 32. And in each of those cases, that's related to the number of edges. That number is two more than the number of edges. So if we looked at vertices plus faces minus edges, we would get two in every single one of these cases. And this, in fact, is not special to platonic solids. It's a general fact about polyhedra. It's known as Euler's theorem. And it says that B minus E plus F equals 2 for any polyhedron you can draw. So it doesn't have to have any regularity properties. You could have that thing we got by gluing two of these tetrahedra together. You could have, say, a pyramid, something that has different kinds of faces. You could have a horrible, unruly, ugly thing that has sort of no symmetry at all. It would still satisfy Euler's theorem. Okay, and so the challenge that I'm going to leave you with is that it's possible to use Euler's theorem to provide a second proof that these five platonic solids are the only ones that exist. Thanks to learn about polyhedra and platonic solids, but I'm going to leave you.